Oh. Yes, this is Exodus. This is the part. This will be the part two of this initiation of the book of Exodus. Exodus, the movement of Yaz of Jah Rastafari in the name of the Jesus Christos people. All right, now we we all should know and be familiar with the song by Burhan and Salasi, and, and and we hope not, but we hope they don't try to block this video because we had that playing in the background, which has happened to other videos so far and so on. If we if that is the case, then um, you probably would know it because you probably would not be able to see this portion of the video. Maybe you won't know it, and we'll let you know it. But if you're able to see it, then hopefully that's not a big a biggie because um you know there's a a colonization of reggae music going on again you know we're being persecuted we're in a time of great tribulation right now my brothers and sisters maybe we don't really feel it to the extreme it's like a it's like an increment it's like a creeping coup and this week's um sabbatical portion that initiates and we call this an exodus and then she a shun. Right? This is an Exodus initiation. What is the Exodus initiation? We're initiating, which is the beginning and the start of the teaching of the book of Exodus. Now, like I, I like to compare this with the song Exodus, because most of I and I's Rastafari, um, no doubt, love that particular song by Burhana Selassie. But we might not, and most likely are not really familiar with the, the the foundation. You know, do we really know where we're going? Do we really know where we're from? Are we prepared to leave Babylon and to enter into the promised land? That's the question. And it's not a it's not a financial or monetary question in that sense. Some of us may think so, and and to do things we do need monies and we do need the communal and the collective we need trust you see we really need trust as, as as a collective because babylon has eroded that trust and um uh falling under the curse you know the generational curse many folks don't like to talk about slavery you know they say well slavery is the past and i'm going forward i want to deal with the past but you need to know where you're from in order to know where you're going. And we as the people, so-called black folks, so-called Negroes, lost sheep, we have gone through a very traumatic experience, a very unique experience. And this is not asking for no, um, you know, no crocodile tears, you know, from the enemy or so forth and so on. You know what I mean? You know, what we're looking at is redemption. And this is what the book of Exodus teaches us. It teaches us the way of redemption. And and we as a people need to get right, not with the so-called white man or the or the red man or the yellow man or what or whatnot. And not even so much as with the black man. We need to get right with God. And in getting right with God, we get we get right with our blackness. You understand? We get right, you understand, with ourselves. You understand? We get right with one another. You understand? And then we can build again based on that very unique thing that all other races have, all other peoples have. And many of us have it more for other peoples than ourselves. And that is trust. That is trust. Now, and moving forward, you know, it's interesting because I could just think for a moment on the fact that, um, you know, when ones would say that we're not in Christ, we're not under the law. No, we're not under the law, but still we have law because law is very important. The scriptures teach us that. You understand? It helps us to establish some sort of regulation. You understand? Keeping the Sabbath, the Shabbat, remembering it even. That's why remembering the Sabbath is more important than any sort of activity that one can even begin to do, because you first have to think about what you're doing. 
You know what I'm saying? And if you don't know what you're doing, you have to learn more about it. And this is why we've been teaching on um, teaching on some of the aspects. Love to play that song because that song is a very inspirational song. But this is why we've been teaching on Shabbat, teaching on the Sabbath, and even reminding ones about moderation and even temper, you know, temperance. Because these are qualities and aspects that true born again brothers and sisters must recognize it becomes then our responsibility in working out our salvation to develop these, develop these characters in our hearts and in our minds, all right? So the second book of, of, of Musa, the second book of Musa, right? The second book of Moses, which we call Shemot, right? The second book of, of Moses is called Exodus. Now, we said that the key words, the first two words, um, some pronounce it ve'ele, shemot, or really more correctly, ve'ele, 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 shemot. And these are the names. Because it begins in chapter 1, and the, and the first portion is Israel in Egypt. It says, now these are the names of the children of Israel, verse 1 and 1, which came into Egypt, every man and his household came with Yaakov, every man and his household and his family. You know what I'm saying? So this also teaches us the true structure of family. Now, we look around today, and, and it's rarely, especially amongst ourselves, that we see this true structure of family. This is one of the, the curses of, of, of slick woolly lynchism, of the curses of slavery, which has destroyed our God-given, and at that time, a more natural form of family structure. However, in redemption, you understand, and in coming out, of Babylon. We must come out of spiritual Babylon, you understand, first, and psychological Babylon to be properly prepared and, and able to come out successfully of physical Babylon. See, it's not the physical that goes first, you understand, in the new birth. In the old birth, it was the physical that went first, but in the new birth, it's the spiritual. It's the spiritual that must go first. And now that spiritual aspect is our God consciousness, is our connection to reality, to life, you understand, our meditation upon truth, you understand, our acting in accordance with our knowledge and acceptance of the truth. When we accept truth, we must act on it. Otherwise, we become hypocrites. Otherwise, we become um, liable and susceptible to the, the, the enemy, the enemy within and the enemy without, you see? So we, we have to touch on the spirituality aspect of it as well as to look at the historical, you understand, and the contextual reality of this verse. You understand? So you see, it, takes, it, it may take one years, and even I and I who have gone over these teachings, you understand, in, in private and in, in certain congregational sense, many times have learned more and more every time that we have read it, studied it, taught on it. And, and, it's, and that's what's really, for lack of a better word, amazing, mystical, as one can say, even magical, is that you already know it or, or know, have, have, have gnosis of certain aspects of it, the scripture. But as you go through it, it builds. There's a building. There's a... There's a the only way I can explain it is in, is in terms of 360, 720, and, and 1080, like, like high density. When you talk about high density, it's a, it's a more, it's, there's more pixels. You get a clearer picture. You're still looking at the same picture. If you look at, oh, remember old TVs, and then you look at some of these new TVs, and some of the really so-called high quality, really high density, high definition TVs, and you look at the same film, now on a more quality TV, you understand? Know it's the same footage you saw before, but you can see it much better, much clearer. And that's what happens. That's why repetition, in that sense, is good, as well as moderation 
and pacing yourself, not just reading, but also meditating and really asking yourself key questions to find out, do I really understand? Do I really comprehend what I'm reading? Do I really know this? Do I have certain questions? You understand? And seeking those things out. This is why we say, brothers, we need to, and sisters, we need to study and find time to study, but to balance our, our lives with other living aspects of our lives. Because sometimes we're not even reading this word. You know, we don't have the Bible in front of us, but because of our time in the scriptures, there's that regurgitation of these things. And that's when it becomes spiritual and mystical in that sense. Because then you'll go and you'll find time at the end of the day after you deal with everything else to sit down and try to look up something and say, oh, wow, that's what I was thinking about. And, you know, you get that clarity. Now, when speaking of this Egypt that we're talking about, we're not talking about a physical Egypt, brothers and sisters. We're not speaking about a physical Egypt in that sense. Though D.C., for example, you understand, and other European, um, Anglo and European um, cities have a lot of Egypt, there's a lot of Egyptic sort of magic that they, that they utilize. When we look at the city of Rome, the obelisk, we look at the obelisk in, in the city of London, we look at the obelisk in other European cities, Germany, I think even France, the Eiffel Tower, we look at the obelisk-like structure in um, D.C. And when you do a little bit of study on D.C., and, 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 and who built it? Benjamin Banneker, they suppressed the black man's role and involvement in it even though he was more in the position of a servant, but the ideas and how he helped to clarify and even codify the masses, them ideas, and had a, and had a mind, a photographic memory. Benjamin Banneker, yes, a black man, you know, saying was part of, uh, instrumental part of the building of D.C. as the White House, so forth and so on. The first black man to stay in the White House as an equal, nay, as a superior, was Kedemawi Haile Selassie. So that's also significant to, to see fulfillment, you understand, and, and to know God's word and to know our story, what they call history, in its proper context. Now, when we look at this book of Exodus, there's a lot of questions people have. People sometimes ask about, well, the Egyptians wasn't bad, and a lot of us as black folks, um, we go through an Afrocentric phase, some maybe don't go through that phase because it depends on, it's like in school, we went through certain grades. Some get maybe stuck at a certain grade. But the Egyptology is a, an important subject matter. But much of the Afrocentric sort of approach to it, it becomes like a, a phase unless one is rooted and grounded in, in who we are as a people and where we're really from. You know what I'm saying? And who we are, we the once lost but now found data is Raya. This is who we so called Afro Americans and and Afro Caribbean, Afro Hispanic people are. But it's not all people and all of our people who are going to wake up, but it's a remnant. This this word is, is to be preached and proclaimed to all. They can willingly hear or forbear. But our role and responsibility is to make the message clear. You know what I'm saying? Is, is to um, prosecute the cause of the, the King of Kings and the kingdom of his Christ. Now, the first thing we need to look at, we, we, just, we just touched on the first verse. But let us get this second book of Moses called Exodus in a clearer context, my brothers and sisters. Like we said, we call this an initiation. It's initiating the book of Exodus because, like we've been saying, the song by Burhan Selassie, by Bob Marley, known as Exodus, the movement of Jah people, is an important song. Now, we as Rastafari, we, we look forward to that Exodus. Many of us are even asking, some have asked I and I and said, um, my brother, uh, I mean, you know, I'm hard. Why aren't you like in Ethiopia and such and such? And I and I long to be there. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, buts about it. Sometimes I liken myself to Hawaii of Paulo, so Paul, where he says, I'm, I'm the Lord's prisoner. You know what I mean? In a sense, I am on a specific 
um, mission for the king of kings, the overs, and it's I and I, it's the, it's the promise of the king of kings, the hope and expectation that in the right time, you understand, in the right season, that we will be there, you understand, even upon Mount Sion, you understand, with the king of kings and, and with Jesus Christos and with the 144 and with the righteous and those who are going through this present tribulation. But it is impossible to um, achieve something by just wishing it or wanting it. Things have their own reason and season. Mm. Now, with that said, mm. with that being said, let's touch on this. So, when we look at the repatriation movement, and now we, we call this the excess initiation but we, we also need to clarify that this is intimately connected with repatriation. When I look at the movement we know as Rastafari, I see that, that the movement seems to be in a state of inertia. Mm. What do we mean by that? There's a certain state of inertia. So it has become more like the Rasta inertia, you understand, has slowed down the Rastafari movement. But we as the individual brothers and sisters, you know, and taking this to, 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 to heart and to mind are important in redeeming the time and, and, and remembering the Sabbath, um, seeking to keep it set apart, utilizing those other days of the week, the six days of the week, to really do Jah's work according to the calling that we are called in. And see, see the calling that we are called in is what is it that Jah has given us? What skills? You know what I'm saying? What does it have to say, I want to be an Amharic teacher, unless that is your particular calling? And there's a lot of valuable calling and vital calling that the brothers and sisters and many of you all have been given. You understand? Know and the first thing is to get your heads and your heart right with the King of Kings in and through the name of Jesus Christos, in and through Jesus Christ. And then to begin to study, you understand, and, and to form also fellowship and partnership with other brothers and sisters as possible. And we know that in, different ones make different decisions. And, and not that you have to respect it, but you have to recognize it is what it is, in other words. And that's also contained in this particular portion. Now, mm, if you are wills, because this portion, it only has six chapters. Uh, this portion is, is, is Exodus 1 and 1 to Exodus 6 and 1. But these six chapters have subject matters that require more in-depth um, explication. They, re they require more in-depth explication and, 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 and teaching on these aspects so one can hopefully grasp how they fit into the the big picture, and also help with the detail and, and, and the clarity, you understand, of the fullness of, of the big picture and, and how we individually and collectively are and must become responsible. Because one is learning. Learning um, is not just learning, but learning um, is connected with some sort of involvement and, and acting on what we're learning and, and being responsible. There's a response ability in, in this learning as well. And I'm saying this to especially the brothers and sisters who are seeking to be faithful and true with this. You know, this but moderation is the key. You understand? Um, the Almighty has given us life in the Jesus Christos and life more what? Abundantly. You understand? So, so Remember these words. Meditate on these words. He has given us life and life more abundantly through his son, Jesus Christos. So the glory of our God, Father, of Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin. Now, the book of Exodus, let's, let's go through this because the book basically, Exodus means going out. Also has a meaning of going out. Mm -hmm. And like we said, the this teaching on Exodus of Shemot is also connected with repatriation. You understand? We call it the, the, the preparation 
for repatriation. It's the, it's the key preparation for repatriation. And if we look at the movement, and even EWF, Ethiopian World Federation, there's, there's a lot of chick, uh, chick a chick, you know what I'm saying, chick a chick. Um, amongst many ones and ones about many things, because once I've forgotten the key thing is in the preamble, our divine heritage. You understand? I've asked many ones and ones, what does that mean? The preamble of the EWF, the Ethiopian World Federation, which is our divine heritage. You can't skip over the preamble. The preamble is like the prerequisite. It's like you can't skip over this book of Exodus, especially as Rastafari, and particularly as Rastafari, because to say one is Rastafari, you understand, is to say one is seeking to be of the very elect of God and Christ. I mean, let us make no mistake about this. Let us be very clear about this and make no mistake about this. That means for such a calling, there is um, to whom much is given, much is required. So this this is why the studies and teachings, the quiet time, the meditation time, the 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 the, the family building, you understand the family of the faith, but also your, the the others, because we have to show even to those who are so called unsaved or not Rastafari, you understand, we have to show the benefits within our spirit, within our truth, within our way of life. You understand, within our spirit and the, and the fruit of our spirit as well. Because the King of Kings, Haile Selassie I, is our prime example of that. And then we can extend it to Her Majesty as well and many others, you understand, of that faithful and that true blue generation. Now, Exodus is going out. That's what it means, going out. It records the redemption, the redemption out of Egyptian bondage of the descendants of Abraham and sets forth in type all redemption. Now, some might hear this and, you know, get into the black-white kind of thing, you know, and a lot of these lies that people have been told are still telling, you understand, about, you know, the Egyptians. Um, some say the Egyptians were white. Some say that they wasn't African. Um, Others who are into some forms of Afrocentricity dismiss out of hand the Bible as though it's a, 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 a European thing because we are limited or they are limited to a European translation and 400 plus years of slick woolly lynchism. So there's a lot of confusion. This is why it is called spiritually Babylon. There's a lot of confusion. You understand? But still, the light of the great illuminator, the King of Kings, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, has shined. You know what I'm saying? We have a clear example. And if we would make our wills obedient to good influences, you know what I'm saying? And study to show ourselves approved and practice the truth and perfect and, and, and walk in that spirit of love, both with those who are within as well as with those who are without. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is not making oneself. Um, a weakling in that sense for the world, you understand? But to show the true humility of His Majesty and His Christ. In other words, it, it, it's, it's to show that 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 humbleness, but that strength, that power of God. You understand the power of the King of Kings and His Christ. Because it's not just with physical power that we come out of this. The Israelites, the Beta Israel, our black Hebrew, Ethiopian Hebrew ancestors, didn't come out of that Egypt. Now, was Egypt black? Yes, Egypt was black. From the very origination, it was Ethiopian. Yes, Egypt was black. No doubt about it. But like so much else that was black, you understand? Others eventually came into it, you understand? And when the time came, they, they co-opted these things and took it over. Mm. We should remember this, you understand? And we're not getting into a section on, um, um, what is it, uh, Egyptian history right now. Many of you all know that we've gone there, and we will need to go there again when we start to address the the historical aspects of this. We think that Gerald Macy's work, 
such as the Book of the Beginning and um, Natural Genesis and Ancient Egypt, the Light of the World, they provide good reference points. You understand? And one thing that Macy, Gerald Macy, does very well in his writings, he tells the truth about the origins really being Ethiopic, you understand? And being Ethiopia and putting ancient Ethiopia in its proper, you understand, context. So there's a reconstruction of Egypt that we must do from an Ethiopic perspective. Um, Brother Legese Ayelin, in his book about um, um, ancient hieroglyphics and, 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 and Amhara and commerce and the language, that connection, forget the exact name of the book right now, but um, the Brother Legese Ayelin, just look up, uh, I think, uh, ancient Egypt, Amhara, Tigray, and commerce, Gibbs, Gibbs, Gibbets. That's what Egypt is called, Gibbets. Now, there's interesting things at every point of this that we'll like to share, even in the name Gibbets. We can show you how that's the Keb or the Geb, the Gebet, the Ta, the Te in ancient um, uh, Egypt or the Medunetar, or the Metunetar, the Inter, was um, to describe land. And so when we look in the Ethiopic, and we are able to decipher the Ethiopic, our first language, we can begin to then reconstruct ancient Egypt, you understand, and a lot of other aspects that we have yet to touch on that start to explain some of the missing, you know, some, a lot of the missing pieces that we find in the current form of so-called Egyptology, especially post-so-called um, post, uh, zeitgeist, which is the whole other story. But let's keep this in tune with the basic teaching here. And if there's other questions, you, you know, that are concerning Egypt or concerning certain aspects, we'll try to deal with that in, 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 in this turn. We'll, we'll, we'll now accepting the reality that Exodus is the movement of Jah people and that the book of Exodus has the keys, vital keys that we need in coming out of Babylon in this prophetic time. You understand? And this book being a preparation towards that particular process. It's, it's, it's a process. You understand? The race is not for, you know, the race not for the swift and the battle is not for the strong. Remember, now, it goes on to state that it is therefore peculiarly the book of redemption. So we want to, we could almost play the next song, redemption song. What's connected with this? You understand this initiation? Well, first of all, repatriation, right? Repatriation. But the key we're learning is Redemption, right? Redemption. Keep that in mind. Now, repatriation means what? What does repatriation really mean? What's the real meaning of repatriation? Remember, this is an exodus. This is an exodus initiation. If you can't define what repatriation truly means at the highest level of abstraction, we got to take this from heaven to earth. So we have to go to the highest level first. You know what I'm saying? What does repatriation mean at the highest level? The spiritual level, in other words. Think think on this for a moment. What does repatriate, repatriation mean? You can look it up, actually. You should look it up. Repatri repatriation means... Repatriation means returning to the Father. Right? That's what repatriation means. These cheap lighters here. You understand? Fire. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you have to just command the word. Yeah. Um, repatriation means... It means return... To Abba. Now we're going to start to use Abba. Mm -hmm. Return to Abba. Return to 
the father, return to Abba. That's what repatriation means. Repatriation means the return to father. What does redemption mean? Huh? To, to again, to re, again, to return to owner, but to buy back something. See, see, see. This is this is why this word is so important. It means to is to redeem, to buy something back. You understand? To return ownership. In a sense, we can even extend it to say return sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we need is, is, is that spiritual redemption. This is why when we talk about the so-called um, antichrist image, the whitewashed Jesus image, and, and the whole counterfeit Christianity, it's important to, first of all, to, to tear that down, to break, you understand, to break that spell. You understand? That ghost so-called spell. You understand that pretended to be the gospel, but was not the true gospel, but was in disguise and posing as it. This is why when we put this book forward and we put this particular cover forward, you can see all these counterfeit, these counterfeit Christ all around the picture. But in the center, in the center is Christ in his kingly character, fulfilling the word, fulfilling scripture. You understand? in spirit according to God's word, and truth according to the historical record and document. I find that there's more when I read the so-called haters of his majesty, you know. Um, I find there's more truth that they tell unconsciously even in their writings. Mm -hmm. So it means to return to owner or to buy back, to almost like reclaim something, to buy something back. Now, what sort of things do you buy back? Not in the present commerce of the world, but in the principle. In the principle, when one is, say, taken as a slave or has sold themselves into slavery, it is only a kinsman, according to Bible principle and Bible law. It's only, a, and this is, and this is, and this is ancient law. Even your your Anglo-European, where the British or American law is based on this, and much of global law, in some sense, has a resonatic effect or is reflected in in law. So when you come to the root of understanding of law, you recognize that in the scriptures. The Almighty has Jah has given us the keys of this. You understand? If we would make our wills obedient to good influences, so that so the choice is still our own. And and what choice would you make? And you have to make that choice. You understand? Either for eternal life or for damnation. You understand? For truth. You understand? And rights, or for the folly of the Babylonian destruction. You know what I'm saying? And this goes beyond just the physical aspects. And it's very important that we remind ones. In fact, everyone is looking for what physical aspects are going to happen 2012. You understand? Um, there's going to be more spiritual and psychological consequences. That's going to be actually very interesting. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's a whole different level of interpretation of even um, the so-called 2012 events that some have touched on. You know, we've listened and, and, and checked out other videos, and we see some are able to, you know, grasp uh, uh, bits and pieces of it, but aren't putting it really all together, but they still recognize there's more to it than people are being told. People are looking for the physical and not recognizing the, the, the spiritual, you understand, the spiritual um, effects and the spiritual destructions that will be coming. You understand? And the psychological certain archetypes are being destroyed. You understand? And these things are already, you're already getting to see signs of it. People going crazy. You understand? And doing crazy kind of acts. You understand? It's like there's a fear. There's a fear of the things to come. And this is also one of the Bible prophecies about this time of unveiling, where Christ will be unveiled or where Christ will be revealed. You understand? Not just so much coming back, but the revelation, the apocalypse, you know, the apocalypse. Mm. But as with the book of, um, 
as of the book of uh, Revelation, there's something very important that needs to be done. There's a, there's, a, there's a coming out. You understand? There's a coming out that needs to be done first and foremost. There's a, there's a, it, it's like a dislodging that needs to be done on a spiritual level. You understand? And should be done willingly and voluntarily. You understand? Because the Great Tribulation should not be perceived as a physical kind of event. You know, like 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 some sort of physical destruction, something that's visible and seen. You understand? Those things that we perceive in our mind and in our spirit are, are, are very much more realer and, and consequentially m more effective. So this is why we need to get our spiritual houses in order. You understand? And, and the word is so fundamental. So let's just get through this right here. And we're using the Schofield Study Bible as, let's just, yeah, using the Schofield Study Bible as a, as, 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 a, as a reference here. And so we now have connected this book with going out and this book with um, redemption. Now, it's important before we even get into the actual book and, and some of the main themes in the book that we go over that we go over this 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 initiation this 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 intro into Exodus and into the movement you understand in the sense of revitalizing the movement of Yah's people because we've been in a state of maybe forty or more year inertia we've been in a state of inertia ones haven't seen it but it's a whole um, kind of a twilight zone it's a bending of reality that that we've been in. And this is why you see a lot of things seem like the 60s again. You know, you get that vibe. People are like, why is it like the 60s? Because it's part of that whole time, Twilight Zone of Time thing that we try to reason on and discuss some of the main aspects of it. And there's some more to come on that. But anyway, this book is about redemption, particularly the book of redemption. But as all redemption is to a relationship with God, so all redemption is essentially, um, uh, concerning this book and concerning the true spiritual truth is about a relationship with the true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. This is what is very, very, this is the key point of the Wengel, of the gospel, of the good news, right? And it goes on to say, of which worship, fellowship, and service are expressions. So how we worship fellowship, which is like the brotherhood and the sisterhood, and service and the agel galot. How do we serve? What do we do? This is, this is what work. And, and remember, this is not the work to, to, to be saved, but in salvation, in that relationship, there is worship. In that relationship, there is um, fellowship or brotherhood, fellowship and sisterhood. In that relationship, there is service. You understand? There is service. As we do this, we can say this is one of our expressions of that service. You understand? Um, of this relationship that is based on redemption. Even the black or the once lost but now found beta Israel redemption. Now, moving on, it says, so Exodus, or Rit Zeat, coming out, in the giving of the law, in the giving of the law, and the provisions of sacrifice and priesthood, becomes not only the book of redemption, but also in type of the conditions, there are conditions, upon which all relationships with the true God, with Ha Elohim Buruku Fegizi Her Lotu Subhat in and through Yeshua HaMoshia exist. So this is th this small paragraph and hopefully if you don't have the, the hard copy of the Schofield Study Bible, reference Bible, you can download it from free for free from our website the lojsociety.org, we would highly advise and recommend that you do so. You know, so you can study some of these things, you know, like, like meals, like you, you try to eat so much as, as is enough, and you can save some of the rest, as it were, for later, y'all willing, you know? So um, this is what we mean by moderation. We find this to be important. We have to remind ones, because it's easy for many of us to even get fanatical 
about certain things and to be zealous in a good thing. You know what I'm saying? It's good always. You know, this, but we really need to remember that key word of moderation and balance. Or in Egypt, it was known as ma'at, which we will call like righteousness, which also is the key and the aspect of that relationship. But it's not so much our so called self righteousness, but it's his righteousness and our walking spiritually in heart and in mind in him and in his way and the example of his Christ, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. Now, broadly, it goes on to say that the book, speaking of Exodus, this 13th, beginning with this 13th uh, um, parasha or kufal or this Sabbath portion, Rastafari Sabbath study, which is the 13th, you know what I'm saying, which was initiated on Friday the 13th, you know what I'm saying, in this 20. 12 year it says that this book it teaches that redemption is essential is essential this means it's very very important to any relationship with a caduce amlak with a caduce amlak with a holy god you understand with a god who is set apart there are gods there are lords but our god and father is set apart from other gods our lord and savior is set apart from other lords. So as many gods or lords there are, but for us there is one, Ahadu Amlak, Yahweh Ahad, Shema Yisrael. Now, that even a redeemed people, a people now who have been what? Have been returned, you understand? Or who have turned again, have been returned, returned to owner, returned to sovereignty, been brought back, so that means they must have been in a condition where they was under some sort of servitude or bondage as we and as our people and to some extent as we still are, even in this spiritual Egypt. You see, we're in a spiritual Egypt presently. This is the big connection now between this and that. We're in a spiritual Egypt. Now, when you begin to understand this, when you begin to comprehend it, then the picture really becomes more 1080, more high definition. So even a redeemed people cannot have fellowship with him. We cannot have fellowship with him unless what? Unless constantly cleansed from defilement. So we have to be constantly cleansed from defilement. And, and see, our cleansing is not just the physical bathing, you understand that's for the physical body, but it's a spiritual washing in his word. So remember, worship and, and fellowship and, and service. And see, we serve him even through our various callings. You see, so some will say, oh, I want to be a preacher. I want to be a pastor. I want to do, do, do a, a more spiritual work because I, I, I love the word and I get it. You can still do that work. In, 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 in as you manifest your gifts and your callings. You understand? If there's not a, you know, if there's not any other way in this present, you know, in this, in this spiritual Egypt that we're coming out of to do it otherwise. You always, so this, this, this balance is, because remember, His Majesty teaches that, that the spiritual and the material are essential, and we must have balance between those two. So just being in the spiritual aspects of it, I mean, being in the Word is important. There's a groundation there. But then there's also the manifestation as we come out, like in the Sabbath time, we are in a sabbatical meditation and seeking for a rest and seeking for a more set-apart time, at least in spirit. You know what I'm saying? You might be in a situation where, like, we're in, we're in Babylon City here, you know, where around us is just Babylonian defilement. But we have to set ourselves apart in our spirit as best as we can. Practice makes perfect. You understand? That's the key right there. So we have to be constantly cleansed from defilement. Now it's the word that washes. It's the word that cleanses us. Now in Exodus, in, in this book here that we have entered into, the sustainer or God, Yahweh, Baruch hitherto connected with the Israelitish people only through his covenant, his al kidan, his word agreement with Abraham, with Father Abraham. He brings 
them to himself nationally. Now, it's through redemption now that the true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, that he brings us to him nationally, you understand, through the process of redemption. But before that, he was connected. Now, when it says before that, that means in Genesis, the, the, the book that we just covered, in, in, in the last, um, the, the first Torah portion cycle, which were 12 um, Sabbaths. So now this is now in the, in the 13th Sabbath, or the 13th week in that sense, the summit in our holy year and our Torah portion readings and feelings. This is the 13th week. All right? So this is significant, that connection now with, um, with, with this book being initiated or beginning this book. But the point about how he was connected with the, the people who are Israelitish or with Abraham and with, uh, with, 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 with uh, Jacob and, and his sons, was because of that covenant that he had made with Abraham. That Kal, we call it a Kal Kidan. Kal means the word, and Kidan means like an agreement in the sense of something that covers, you know, like, like a word agreement, a word that covers a certain, a certain act, a certain relationship, a certain contractual sort of agreement. So that was with Abraham. But now... He's bringing us nationally as a nation, because we as Beta Israel are a nation. He's bringing us to himself through redemption as the king of kings. Fulfill that for us as the once lost. You know what I'm saying? Being Christ in his kingly character, being Moa and Bessazer, Emenegeri Yehuda, Kadamawi, Haila, Selase, Siyuma, Egeziyari, Her, Negusa, Neges, Ze, Echopia. And being he who is who he is, he has brought us to himself. Now, many still don't really get it, you know what I'm saying? And, and hopefully we will be able to present more evidence, you know what I'm saying, how this was accomplished, how both God's word and the history, you know what I'm saying, and the real history proves that. We, we touched on it briefly when we spoke about um, who freed, the so-called Negroes, who freed black people in America. People say Abraham Lincoln. I say, nay. I say it was Kedemawi Haile Selassie. That's our kinsman redeemer. See, if you understand the importance of kinsman redeemer with the Beta Israel, who we are, then you can see that connection. So now, with that being overstood, this aspect of, of comprehending how Exodus prepares us to come out of Babylon spiritually, psychologically, you understand, and ultimately physically, according to his order. So we're giving this as a background because we think that, you know, we can get into the book itself, but these, um, these footnotes, or not footnotes, but this is actually an introduction that we're going through right here. And you can go to our webpage, but we find that this is a good reminder, even though we've read it before, as we studied other things, We'll try to come back to it again, you know, when we're going through this book, like in the Torah portion, readings and feedings, and it becomes even more clear, like that high definition example we had um, given earlier. But let's get this right here, that um, this puts them, and this time they were under what's known as the Mosaic Covenant. Now they were under the Mosaic Covenant that dwells among them in the cloud of glory in the Shekinah, in the Shekinah, or the Shekinah, the Shekinah, the, Se the Sekinah, Bamarinya, Sekinah. Galatians, this is a book we've been in recently, even before this. We see even some of the teachings that we have done over the past couple of weeks even kind of lead in and connect with some of the main themes that's contained in this Parsha, in this Kufl, this particular portion and in the other portions connected in this particular book, the book, the second book of Moses, the book known as Exodus or Shemot in the Hebrew and Simoch in the Amharic. Now, it says that um, Galatians explains the relation of the law to the Abrahamic covenant. 
Galatians explains how the law is related to the Abrahamic covenant, the Abrahamic al -Kidan. In the commandments, now we get the commandments, Ha Elohim had taught Israel his just demands, or what we know as Ma'at, justice, righteousness, equity, his, his uh, Siddiq, you understand, the Siddiq, his uh, Siddiq um, demands. Experience, Gideta I think would be, experience under the commandment convicts Israel of sin. Now, as one experiences being under the commandment, this is why it says that the Torah uh, or, or the law is our school mass until Christ becomes. So it's like we go through these studies, as we go through these studies, we're going through our school master until that Christ consciousness has come. So we gain an experience, even by the study of it, under the commandment to convict us as Israel is convicted, us as a people in entirety, you understand, in totality of reality, under sin, under falling short of his just demands. Now, the provision of priesthood and sacrifice, which was filled with, and, and get this, that the provisions that were of priests, the priesthood, but in principle, and the sacrifices of the priesthood that we get in the Old Testament, these are filled with precious types of the Mashiach, of the Messiah, of Christos, of Christ. There's precious types. This gave a guilty people a way. There was a way now given to them of forgiveness, one, cleansing, two, restoration to fellowship. It's just like right now amongst us is Rastafari. We don't really fellowship as we used to. Some still might in certain circles, but there used to be a, a greater spirit of fellowship. So we can see even here in this spiritual Egypt, there needs to be a restoration to fellowship. And fourthly, the fourth point here, worship. Understanding, well, what is worship? What is a selot? What is the selot bait? What is a house of prayer? You understand, we call it bingy, we call it this or that. But let's get to the root, the selot bait. You see, even in your house, that place in your house, that room or closet, the place that you go to, just to take a prayer and just take a meditation. You understand? That, 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 that's, that's like a bait. That's like a house right there. That's an example of what a house of prayer. And even this, we are like a house. We, we are symbolically a bait as well because the Spirit dwells in this house. You understand? So understanding what bait and the significance, this is where it gets Kabbalistic on a certain level when we start to get into the into the metaphors and, and the various um, meanings and applications of certain words, you understand? But that, there's a discipline to that as well. These are the basic steps that lead to that level. So the guilty people, and we are a guilty people, says guiltiness rests upon their conscience. Oh, yeah. Now, some would say they're not guilty. They're not being honest. And if you're not going to be honest, you understand, and truthful with the Holy Spirit, then there is no forgiveness. This is why some, it gives them a way of forgiveness, but not everyone takes advantage of that way because each one has a choice. Some say, I don't, I don't, I don't want to check for that Bible stuff. I don't deal with that. You know what I mean? Well, that's their choice. You understand? Is it the right choice? It's their choice. From I and I vantage point, it's not the right choice. They should find the truth for themselves, not just to assume, but each one is entitled as long as it doesn't stop another from their freedom of choice to their particular choice. Now, some people don't get that, you know, but we have to understand when he says, let he who want to be um, clean be clean, and he want to be unclean be unclean. Allow one's their decision because each one will reap what they sow. You understand? We all will. You understand? Now, in Christ, there is forgiveness, and through Christ, but some things we still may have to work out with our brother man or our sister woman, whether directly or in spirit, in prayer. And those are aspects that we'll touch on hopefully at another time. But it's important how now this book and this particular um, um, introduction here from the Schofield Reference Bible is giving us an overview that you might read through it, but you need to study it. This is why we're taking the time in these uh, Sabbath 
the 13 sabbatical readings and feedings to focus on this aspect of this new book. Now, I know there was some other aspects, because, you know, when you, when you study this, if you really study this for yourself, you will, you can read through it, you know, in a sitting, you know, the Torah portion, you could read through it, get the idea, keep it moving, you understand? Or you could read through it and focus on certain aspects and really see like one, for example, portion of this when you really start to even do your own homework. And if you have an opportunity to look certain things up and put the picture together. And I know a lot of us have so many different responsibilities that we might not be able you know what I'm saying, to take as much time as we would like, but at least take some time and, you know, balance, you know what I'm saying, balance and, 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 and in um, spirit and in truth, you know what I'm saying, and a clear conscience. Now, we have to make peace with our conscience. That's what Matthew teaches us. Now, the guilty people, they were provided a way of forgiveness, a way of cleansing, restoration to fellowship, and worship. This is also the foundation of the true Beta Christian, the true church. This is why Exodus, the movement of John people, is so significant on many levels. You understand? Know but now for us as Rastafari and for us as Ethiopian Hebrews, it takes on a particular significance for us in this particular time and space, in this particular year, in 2012 and beyond. Now, the last part of this basically says that Exodus falls into three chief divisions. So there's three overall divisions to this book. One is Israel in Egypt, um, chapter 1 to chapter 15. Secondly, from the Red Sea to Sina or Sinai, chapter um, 16 to chapter uh, uh, 18. Then the third part, Israel at Sina or Israel at Sinai, chapter 19 to... Um, to chapter, is this, uh, wait, chapter 19 to chapter 40, 40, 40, 40, yeah, um, to chapter 40, yeah, oh, chapter 40. So these are the main um, portions, the main uh, divisions of this book. That's the overview. Now, if you check with our Sabbath house readings and the chart and you look at the, ex, the, the the Torah column you will see that we go up to 23 so there's about like there's about roughly um, what 11 or so of these there's about 11 of these you understand there's about 11 portions you understand of which this is the first particular portion now in the next part coming forward, I'm going to take a pause for the cause. And the next part coming forward, we'll try to begin and get into this very important book. You understand? The book that is known as Exodus, the movement of Jah's people. So, brothers and sisters, stay tuned. All right? Shalom. Love you. Rastafari. In the name of the Yesus Christos. Send back salam. Ain't I used to lean when we're meeting.